morning, inshallah ta'ala, we are going to be going to Arafah. And as I mentioned, this is the very most important day of our journey. The ninth of the Hijjah. This is what we call Yawm Arafah. Which, this is when we leave from Mina and we go to Arafah. Now, as we said, the Talbiyah is being repeated again and again and again, depending on your energy, inshallah ta'ala, even if you feel exhausted, you can stop, relax, uh, you know. But always remind yourself to go back and do the Talbiyah. And don't get involved or indulged or engaged in so many social talks because that tend to be extremely comfortable. You are, you know, sitting next to your friend and you're talking and talking and talking about the exact same dunya affairs and whatever, and without you realizing, the whole day has gone. And this is a very important day that you came all the way. You crossed the ocean to come to this day for Allah's forgiveness. And then all of a sudden, you just found yourself that you have slept most of the day in the tent because it was too hot and you said, I'm tired. And when you woke up, all you did, you just prayed the Dhuhr and Asr and that's the end of it. And that is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to go there. Sacrifice yourself for Him. Submit yourself for Him. Cry out for Him. Do whatever you can. Because this is the day, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the day and the only day, and there is no disagreement among the scholars with this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees the, free the most number of his servants from hellfire. So this day is considered on record that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants forgiveness to so many of his Muslims, Muslim servants, so many numbers that unlimited nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frees the necks of so many of his servants from hellfire and in order for this to happen and if you wish for you to be among these people and to be on record we need to commit ourselves on that day for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to go spend the whole day uh, uh, sleeping not like some brothers uh, you know with all the respect uh, for those brothers who have the tendency to smoke, they're just going to the areas where they see other, uh, other friends and they're just taking the time to talk and smoke and do, and this is really extremely wrong. All the acts, all the bad habits that we should, we are doing, we should avoid during these five days, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get us out of these bad habits and to give us uh, forgiveness. So. Let me just, so I would not lose my uh, train of thought. I will finish this and then if you have any questions, inshallah, we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll answer them. So if possible, of course, if the Sunnah, what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, while going to Arafah, he stayed at a place, uh, you know, what's called now Masjid Namira, before Duhr time, and there was a speech that he gave to the Sahaba. So this is still happening up to this day. So people who tend to be kind of free from these packages walk to that masjid, stay in it and listen to the khutbah and then they proceed to Arafah. However, this is not happening to most of us. All the packages do not do this for a very good reason and this has nothing to do with money or commercial. This place is really extremely, extremely crowded to a point that you would not, you know, be able to really even go in and the sun is going to be on your head and you might really get sick, extremely sick, and then end up really being very fatigued and you're not going to be able to perform the rest of your journey. So I have done it. I do not recommend it to anyone. There is really no enjoyment, none whatsoever, because of the fact that it's extremely jammed, extremely crowded. and. This is not really something that we must do. It's just something that Prophet Muhammad did and it was the sunnah if it's possible for us. Like the black stone, remember what we said last week? We're not gonna go and fight our way to touch the black stone because there is a higher standard that we live up to. And that is, I'm not gonna push and shove my brothers and sisters because of the fact that I just wanna touch the black stone. Same thing happens here. 
is that we're not going to go fight our way into side the masjid because that's what happens. A lot of people end up fighting each other because of the fact that they want to have a space. They cannot stand uh, uh, in the heat outside. So we most likely are not going to be doing this. However, we will be passing, especially the new packages now, the upgraded packages. They're using the trains and the trains do not stop onto these uh, areas because the trains tends to take much of the walking uh, a time that you end up walking from place to place as we showed on the map, from Mina to Arafah, then to Mustalifa. So the trains tend to take much of that uh, uh, walking time that you do. However, they do not stop by these places. So you're going to spend the day, inshallah ta'ala, Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, we're going to stay until sunset in Arafah. And that is the sunnah. For you to spend all day until sunset, until Maghrib time. Most packages give you that privilege. Some packages who wants to avoid the crowd, they get you out before Maghrib time. So it all depends, but most packages they intend because they understand that this is a very, very important day, and that's the day of Hajj actually. So they tend not to kind of, you know, uh, do any shortcuts on this day. So now, what are we going to do during this day? During this day, we are going to, to get busy with remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dua, you know, and you need to do every single good ritual act that you know, you're able to, especially dua, it is extremely important. One of the most important reported dua that Prophet Muhammad recommended and he said, most prophets and all prophets have said that and repeated that dua is what you see right here. La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulk, wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. That's a very highly recommended dhikr that you should keep saying again and again and again and again as much as possible. Now there is something that you need to know and that is something that's a human nature. The fact that we have been already exhausted through our journey, what's going to come and ruin most of your really uh, 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 peaceful time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the tendency to go to sleep because you're exhausted, you're sleepy, you haven't you know, done a lot of uh, sleep for the past since you have left the U.S. You did not do much of that. And basically, the more you read or the more dhikr, you're gonna feel that tendency of going to sleep and feeling extremely sleepy. This is uh, where you need to really uh, uh, do it right. Sometimes it's a good idea for you to take uh, a nap you know, for half an hour, an hour, just just to kill that sleep that basically might come and ruin your day. And then when you, you know, get that nap, you get up, go to the uh, washing rooms and get yourself a refreshed wudu and get back. And always, always tend to walk and stand. Not to just, you know, lay back. Because the second you sit or lay back, I can guarantee you, Maybe five minutes of reading Quran, then you are basically dead, you sleep. You're going to go to sleep because you're tired. So we're going to spend all day praying. Now, Duhur and Asr gets shortened and combined together. Duhur and Asr get shortened and combined together. Two and two, and they're combined together. And we pray also in jama'ah, in small jama'ahs in our tents. So we do not tend to do them in large masajids or mosques. And after we finish, after sunset or when basically our group is ready or the bus ready or those who do access the train get the okay to go to the station, basically this is where we start departing Arafah to Muzdalifah.